A modern information and communication technology center has been inaugurated at the Ashanti region, Ashanti Newtown in Kumasi. The project is aimed at enhancing the ICT knowledge of students in the Mencia South constituency. Benjamin Edu has more. Commissioning the computer laboratory for schools in the constituency, the member of parliament for Mencia South, Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe, explained he was committed to empowering youth in the area. The MP also presented more than 100 electronic tablets and 2,000 reading materials to about 16 beneficiary schools in the area. Out of the series of educational infrastructure support we have been giving to Mencia Kedsi and with the support of Get Fund and other charitable institutions. Schools that had no toilets are being provided with toilets, Kedsi of Get Fund. Schools without water are being provided with boreholes and overhead tanks. The aim of us, some of our things we are doing is to prevent a child from dropping out in Mencia for lack of uh, teaching and learning aids. The Metro Director of Education, Alexander Ata Asante, commended the MP for the initiative, but added more should be done to further develop the schools. Some of the schools have requested for furniture, but we are constrained financially to provide those kind of things. So, having furnished with this, the likelihood is that we will also ask the MPs to turn their eyes to that particular problem and see how they will also help us. The Mesha South MP also shared his thoughts on the ongoing Kejetia redevelopment project. The KGTR market affects Subi, it affects Mencia, and it partly affects Bantama. But the people who trade in the market reside all over Kumasi and all over Ashantri. So it is in our interest that their rights are protected. What are some of the rights? The workers, the traders who ply their trade in the market, who have stalls and, uh, and tables in the market, are given first right of return. The other shops will become the relocation centers for the first part of the central market that is going to be done which parliament passed the, the loan agreement just about last week. This is still Midday Live on TV3. Time now for Medical Notes. I can say we see a lot of Parkinson's disease. And then we have a lot of patients, but we haven't studied the prevalence to give an accurate number of persons who might be suffering Parkinson's disease at any time. But if you take a look at our uh, neurology clinic, more than 30% of elderly attendants have Parkinson's disease. So it's not, it's not that uncommon in Ghana. The older you get, the higher your risk will be of developing Parkinson's disease. For those who have the genetic predisposition with the gene abnormalities, you, you, you can't really do much, really, isn't it? But for those who have, um, uh, who may get it from strokes, we can't prevent, if we prevent you from getting a stroke, we can prevent you from getting Parkinson's disease quite early on in life. Uh, but if we prevent you from getting it quite early on in life, we cannot prevent you from getting it as you age. It's also very difficult to tell somebody not to not to go and practice like a profession like boxing because of the risk of Parkinson's disease. Because apart from the repeated head trauma, there is also the there should be like a genetic predisposition really for you to because not all boxers develop Parkinson's disease. All right, so this is still Midday Live. Now we would want to bring you some updates on what is happening with regard to Ghana's decision to issue visas on arrival and then also how we intend to secure our borders ahead of the 2016 election. Stay with us. Details of that coming up shortly in business.
Santa's ice cream. I see cool freshness. In the beginning was our legacy, value and beauty. This legacy was inherited by our first beauty queen, Amma from the Central Region. All right, so Amma takes a final lap. Then it moved on from one queen to another. Season 9, ladies and gentlemen, AC! Now, the legacy is here to stay. Ghana's Most Beautiful is brought to you by Sasu Insecticide Spray and Coils and supported by... Ghana's Most Beautiful Season 10, only on TV3. Ghana's Most Beautiful. Redefining beauty to promote national unity. My name is Ayuke Utu, former Attorney General Minister for Justice. The Constitution mandates that every four years we have national elections both presidential and parliamentary. This year, 2016, is an election year. MG Media Platform, the Election Command Center, will be holding a series of discussions aimed at assisting the electorates to make informed choice before the elections. And after the elections, would also take reactions. I urge you all to listen to the MG Media Platform or join us on Election Command Center. This is your Election Command Center. We are the specialists. Everything you need to know. Captivating. Reliable. And Mahama, who addressed a deborah of chiefs and people of credible. And breaking news. All at your fingertips. Who's found out Samoa Gian? Super finish! Being on top of the news has never been easy. Visit us at www.3news.com for all your reliable news. 3 News. News at your fingertips. Hello, good afternoon to you. Welcome to the Business News here on Media Live. My name is Alfred Okansi. Let's go on to our first story this afternoon. And Ghana has begun issuing visa on arrival to African Union member citizens. Now, the move is to open Ghana business uh, to, to business and also increase trade. It is also further Ghana's plans of integration with the rest of Africa. But what are the threats or challenges associated? with this particular move. Francis Palmdetti is joining me in studio. He is the head of public affairs at the Ghana Immigration Service. Good to have you, sir. Thanks now, let's, let's get a bit more detail into this. What exactly occasioned this move by uh, the service? Um, this is a decision taken by the heads of state at the Executive Council meeting of the African Union. Mm. And uh, our president indicated in his State of the Nations address that come July, African Union nationals can obtain visas on arrival. We are the agency mandated to um, implement aspects that relate to migration in this country. Mm -hmm. And so with that kind of directive, it looks like a new policy which we will have to implement. And so we started preparing towards this. As we speak, Kutuka International Airport has been designated as a point where one can obtain a visa on arrival if you're an African national. We, have been, we are piloting it for three months, see how it rolls out, and if we think that all is well, then we we'll extend it to other entry points. But I, I know that there are other AU countries or member states that have a certain visa-free agreement with, with Ghana. Mm. So what's so different about this? I mean, the, the difference is that with ECOWAS, they have 
a dispensation to live in the country for 90 days after they arrive. Mm -hmm. But with, the, with this particular policy, it gives them a 30 day, 30 day, 30 day dispensation. And I they see. would obtain the visas on arrival, but it's not free. Okay. That's what I think events. you need to clarify. Yes, that we have because there was an visa free agreements. Mm -hmm. For instance, the ECOWAS situation is a visa free agreement mm -hmm. situation. But this new directive is that you wouldn't have to go to the embassy to obtain a visa. You can come straight to Ghana at the entry point and take a visa, but it is not free. Okay. But with other agreements, let's say a Nigerian can appear at the airport and will be admitted because his arrangement so setting with the, a, a it's a free, with it's a visa free, exactly. visa free yes. kind of uh, yes. process. But in this particular case, they will obtain the visa on arrival, but they will have to pay at for the cost. Visa. How the much cost. exactly? As we speak, the, the charges and fees law has already been passed. Mm -hmm. And so the current emergency entry visa fee, which is $150, is what they are currently paying. As and when um, the new fees are being reviewed, proposals will be sent to the Ministry of Finance to consider fees specifically for AU nationals who obtain visas on arrival. 